Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I wanted to do a little pre-vlog introduction. So, I vlogged this trip to Chicago where I was speaking at the Tastemaker Conference. And uh, at first I wasn't gonna post it because I was like, ooh, that was back in March. I, as of today, I'm filming this, it is May. So I don't know if y'all know my videos are on a, on a little bit of a delay because I'm trying to be consistent, okay? And the only way for me to be consistent is to space my videos out and give them some time, okay? So your girl is trying to be consistent with her videos and so sometimes um i mean i'm pretty sure if you've been watching youtube for any amount of time you know that with a lot of people there is a delay in their content so that that gives them a buffer when life happens because i since i don't do youtube full-time as a job i have a whole company that i run um i i I'm, I'm trying to get it in where i fit in because i i, I love hanging out with y'all over here okay and i really missed you know creating content for the sole purpose of enjoying to create content. So anyway, I wanted to come on and do this video, uh, this little intro to the vlog, because I don't know how much footage I still have, but I, I think I still have a full, the full experience. But let me tell you why I really wanted to share this vlog, because it dawned on me a couple of years ago. I was like, you know, a lot of times in our lives, we have friends and we never get to see them at work, right? Like this is like, even family members, we never get to see them at work. We never really get to see them do what they do and we just believe that they do a good job we just believe that they're they're good at what they do and so you know while there's you know take your child to work day there's not bring your best friend to the office day right <laughs> and so uh i always find it fascinating when i kind of get to look behind the curtain of my friends or certain family members like do what they do and be like oh man like i have no idea what you're talking about but i can tell that you're really good at what you do right like I love that experience and so I wanted to do this vlog because this is basically a work trip for me. I am on the advisory board of the Tastemakers Conference and so I'm also this I think this would be my third time speaking with them so twice during the pandemic virtually and then one time in person and so this is one of the things that I do to market my business um, and all that kind of stuff and you typically we typically don't get to see people in their work element like even if people are vlogging about like oh i'm on my way to work or they're showing you behind the scenes you don't actually get to see them performing their job so that you this is just a little snippet a little behind the scenes of me uh speaking at the tastemaker conference in chicago of this year so that's why you know even though it's 95 degrees here in dallas today when i'm recording this you are going to see sweaters and cold weather in the vlog but i hope that you still enjoy it and uh i'll see you in my next video peace I just made it to Chicago. Um, figured I'd do a little vloggy vlog. I am speaking at the Tastemakers Conference and then I'm staying the weekend. So I just got to my hotel, downtown Chicago, and the view from my room, like I don't know if you can see the lake view. Look at this, look at this. Let me bring you closer. Look at this. Uh, it's gorgeous so that's gonna be my view for the next five days anyway I'm here and I figure figure wow can I talk I haven't vlogged in a long time I figured I would give you a little tour of the room so let me go back to the front door and start from there okay so <laughs> 
here we are. My luggage is still here. Don't judge me for all the luggage and I'm only going to be here for five days. I have lots of activities. So let me flip the camera around and kind of give you the view. So when you first come in to the left, beautiful bathroom, like look at that shower. This is the one of those showers with the half doors, which is not my favorite, but hello, hello, hello. Okay. Lots of very eclectic artwork as well. Um, then come around the bend, have the closet. Hello again. It's a good size closet. And then we have the bedroom. So this is a king room and a little nice stand here. Flat screen, desk, little chair, little bench, and, I, and another like side situation. I've already shown you the fantabulous view, which I'm just like, yes. And then there is a little, you know, bar situation for your ice, your coffee, your tea. There is a small fridge under here. So if I have leftovers or something like that, I can do that. But yeah, y'all, um, that's it. I am going to unpack and shower because I've been traveling and get ready because the next several days are going to be very, very busy and I want to make sure that I'm rested up. So, and plus I'm going to grab some dinner at the hotel restaurant here shortly. Okay. Peace. All right, y'all. Wow. The lighting right here is not good, but I basically, I have unpacked everything and I just threw on a dress, some leggings, and some about some leopard ballet flats to go downstairs to the downstairs restaurant for some dinner. Let me let me go into the bathroom. Excuse the mess, I've been already started, but hello. So just threw on a little bit of face. Hello. Um, took the hair down. It's a little limp because I have fine hair, but um, it'll do and just gonna go get something to eat, so. Good morning, listen, I don't have a lot of time. I'm running late, I'm on my way there, but I wanted to show you my face of the day. Y'all, my makeup was looking crazy yesterday. I don't know what was going on. I was using products I don't normally use because all my other stuff was packed, but my lift is almost here, but I wanna show you my outfit, so. Let me do that. And upon further exploration, I don't love this room, but let me show you my outfit. Okay. So I'm just wearing a little sweater set, a camisole and some boots because it is 30 degrees here in Chicago. The lighting's not great, but here we go. Okay. Bye.
really get it. I don't think I've ever been like an episode that was by myself for longer than like eight minutes. Because I talk so fast and I'm like, and then I added things and he's like, it's still eight minutes. It's something that is. <laughs> See, I, mine are normally like, you know, at least more than like half an hour. I need to be better. It's all this for me. We try to get people to sit at the table. So it's the end of day one. The tiredness. Sorry, I've got vitamin C in my mouth. I'm chewable. I'm so tired. Like, um, I'm making tea in the background. The tiredness that I feel, like it's a quarter after nine. I'm about to wash my face, take a shower. I'm going to bed. Um, it was a great day. Chewable vitamin C. My talk is tomorrow afternoon. I don't even know how many clips I've got. I don't even, I might have to do a voiceover. I don't even know. I'm still out of practice with vlogging, but I wanted to say day one was great. And I'll see y'all. I'll see. Listen, I don't change outfits. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay. Peace. So listen, I took lots of stories today i'm so sleepy and my introvertedness is like needing to be fed in person but it has been a wonderful day i have met some amazing amazing people heard some great speakers um my session is tomorrow um at the end of the day i will be talking about how to monetize uh, your food business or blog with cooking classes. So I'm super, super excited about it. Um, I just got home from the speaker dinner. That was fun. And now I'm back at the hotel and I'm going to shower, get in the bed and get ready for another full day tomorrow. And then, so, so today we had the conference and then we had the speaker dinner. Tomorrow there's the conference and then there's like an influencer brand meet and greet. And then um, the Inspired Home Show is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So I'm probably going to rest Saturday. And then there is a, a dinner excursion Saturday night. And then I probably will go to the Inspired Home Show on Sunday. So we're just having a good time here. Good night. Good night. So I had to turn the camera around because I realized that... Um, when I am trying to vlog with the regular camera, this is the front facing camera. The front facing camera like distorts the color. Yeah, my half my head was cut off. I'm gonna leave it in there though because I'm not about to refilm it, but I, I don't even know. I haven't even looked at the other footage because I'm vlogging on my camera because I, I was not about to bring a DSLR to Chicago. Oh, and I have a silk press right now. I don't know if I've shared that, but my ends be going bad fast. like. I just got a silk. I just got this silk press on Monday. Today is Thursday, and but in her defense, I do be working out. So, y'all, my introvert is self. I need a minute. Okay. Good night. Good morning. It is day two. Oh, I've got the good morning voice. Um, look at this view. Like, look at the sun. I don't know if y'all can see the sun, just the shining. It is, oh, there it is. Um, it is gorgeous out here. I slept in today um, because yesterday was a long day. I think I have some clips. I don't know. But I'm about to get dressed. My presentation is today. And yeah, y'all, I'm excited for day two here in the shy all right um listen if you are from chicago or know it well 
Leave me some suggestions about great restaurants to try the next time I'm here. Leave it in the comments below. All right, y'all, let me get dressed. I didn't even show y'all outfits of the day yesterday, so maybe we'll do better today. Okay, bye. Good morning. I am dressed, ready to go. My makeup is a little heavy today just because um, with the mask wearing, it's going to wear off a little bit. I'm going to change my lippy before I speak, but um, let me show you my outfit. It's late. Um, I decided not to go to the early morning sessions because I was tired. And yes, I'm going to be changing these shoes. So here is my outfit for today. I do have heels for when I speak, but all the floors are concrete. And let me tell you whose feet are not about to be tired. <laughs> Mine I got my name badge here, but it's just a nice little skirt mask right here. But I'm about to catch my lift and I'll see y'all there. Oh, what they're doing is they're updating seven posts a week instead of three. I mean, maybe they are doing that, but it's so much bigger than that, right? Because anyone can update seven posts a week. Okay, so the first shift is that they have moved from thinking that there is one right way to build and grow a blog to following the path that's right for them. Because when I look at these seven-figure bloggers and when I talk to them, I mean, one of the things I do is you know, in three years, you could be making, you know, $50,000 as a, as a manager. And I'm like, I want to go back to these sites. <laughs> I want to I work for myself. And um, what was it? It was last year where I was able to make that $50,000 in just a couple months. And I said, you know what? This this joke right here, I should have taken that job at Macy's. But a lot of times what they leave out is their three story. And I think. Uh, the pre-story being like, for Lindsay, she was an educator. Uh, for me, I was really interested in photography, uh, business, I would listen to podcasts. Uh, I took the job at a non-profit uh, to do the IT work. And so I had like three or four years of kind of tinkering with websites and, and, um, and building. And that kind of led up to this point where like, hey, maybe we should start this website like, and should be on. So another encouragement is for people to think about like, what are you coming to the table with? your free story that you can fold into, even like the military, it's like you had a work ethic and a mindset that came from that that you could deploy against your early stage um, work that you were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
are closer to teaching Google classes than you already think, okay? And then we're also gonna talk about how do you get repeat customers and with all of these content food creators out there and bloggers, how do you make your classes stand out? Because if everybody's teaching how to do, what is it, the custard toast, the yogurt toast that everybody's talking about all the Like, who's gonna come to my class on that? And, then, and so making your classes stand out. So I want to start with this. There are millions of people who spend more time watching food being cooked on television than they actually spend cooking themselves. And this quote is what made me start teaching cooking classes because I was like, well, if I could get in front of them and give them a more interactive experience than them watching the Food Network, then I can charge them for that, okay? And I'm like a culinary business shirt, so if you hear me talk about money a lot, I love it. I want you guys to make all the money. I'm not squeamish about dollars, so you can ask me all the questions. Okay, so why cooking classes? This is, this is why it's my favorite thing to talk about. How many of you have less than 10,000 Instagram followers? Okay, 5,000, less than 5,000. Okay, how many of you are hanging out with me and you're like at 3,500? Okay, and so you're thinking, can I work with a brand if I don't have all of these followers? I love that you can do two cooking classes because you can do them in a myriad of ways that it doesn't really matter what your blog traffic is, it doesn't really matter what your social stats are, okay? Also, you don't have to feed that algorithm black hole, right? So how many times have we gotten like content burnout, right? We're just like, I just need to take a break. I've been cooking, 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 washing dishes, and more dishes. Anybody? Okay. So what I love about cooking classes is you can actually create one bank of content and use it over and over and over and over again. So for example, I've written over 200 cooking classes in my career, but I haven't written a new cooking class in over three years, and I still sell them. Okay, so this is like the true definition of evergreen content, right? I'm, I'm selling classes with menus that I developed in 2012, okay, and they're still, they're still selling, okay? And here's my favorite piece, particularly for a conference like this, is you probably already have the tools, okay? How many of you guys have a, a decent camera? Right, a webcam. Some kind of live streaming software, Zoom, Facebook Live, Right? Okay. You have the tools because you already have all the kitchen equipment and I already know that you can cook. Okay? So you're halfway there. All right. So what's possible with cooking classes? I kind of talked about this. The biggest thing, like in the title of my session, is you can work less and make more. I remember the first time I did a cooking class and I earned more in that one cooking class than I used to earn in a month. Okay? And I was like, wait a minute. This is the thing. Are you telling me I can work for four or five hours between prep, cook, and clean up and earn my monthly salary? Okay, so I was sold from there. Like I said, it's another way to earn income. It's another way to work with brands, right? So when everyone else is selling original content creation, you can say, hey, I know that you, it's hard for you to bring your products to life and create these experiences. And so you can offer a private cooking class to a brand and maybe some of their um, clients or maybe some of their customers or maybe some of their fans or on their socials, right? You can cook live on their socials. There's so many different things you can do. And so I work with a lot of non-food because the recipes that typically will rank for SEO are probably actually not the best kind of recipes for a cooking class. People want something a little bit more advanced. They want something a little bit more interesting. They want something that you can teach them steps along the way. So there's an art to writing a cooking class menu. There's an art to teaching a cooking class. And then there's the business side of it. Okay, which is what format is going to be the best for my business or my blog? How do I want to grow this? Who's going to be my target audience? What's going to make me different? And um, how do I want to structure my classes? And then the last one is the management, which is dealing with the difference between um, teaching, like making a really good cooking class and being a great cooking instructor, is that you have to know why people are taking a cooking class. So for example, if someone is coming to your site, they're looking for a recipe to get dinner on the table or have a healthier alternative to a recipe you made or whatever your blog's um, point of view is, right? When it comes to a cooking class, there's three reasons why people come to a class, but you don't know who is who, okay? So some people are coming because they want to experience the food. They want that more interesting recipe and they want to learn it from you, okay? Some people are coming because they want to learn the skill of cooking. And some people are coming because they just want to have a good time. What tends to happen is if you don't know who's in your audience, you will skew your class. Either it's all fun 
very little education, and the food's pretty good. Or it's way too educational, people are bored to death, right? But they learn something, and the food is pretty good. Or the food is pretty good, and they're just not quite sure what happened. Okay, so knowing why they, so knowing why they're there is very important. And so when you start going through the classes, you will find out that it goes from being really, really lighthearted that this is a day night out for a couple, or this is a company that wants to reward their employees, to people who I've had students in my class who were aging and um, a spouse died and they never cooked for themselves before and they needed to learn how to cook, or I've had students who were autistic and this is the only thing that they could do and so their parents would bring them as adults to my classes or students who were losing their memory and so they needed something to do repetitive to kind of keep their dexterity, right? So you're gonna get the gamut of when it comes to cooking classes of people who are just coming for a really good time and people who are invested for a deeper reason. So knowing why they're there is super important. The next thing is, I mean, when you teach a cooking class, automatically they're going to view you as the expert. That's the stage from the stage, right? You put someone in front of the room, and they automatically appear to be the expert. But in a cooking class, people can feel very intimidated. I've actually had someone, and you guys are not going to believe this, in a class who I handed a potato to, and then I handed her her potato peeler, and she was like, what is this? <laughs> okay, she didn't know how to peel a potato, had never seen a potato peeler before, right? And so you have to, that delicate balance of, Oh my gosh, I've never peeled a potato ever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but being a, a, a guy by their side, right, because you, you are more advanced than they are, whoever's taking your class 99% of the time. I mean, you're always going to have that person that thinks they can out teach you, but yeah. you disregard those people, okay? It's like the people that come on your side and like, you should have did this, and it's like, well, then you, you bring it. Um, but you want to balance between being a guy by their side and a sage from the stage, and that's the, when you put yourself in front of people in a class, it's very different than being behind the recipe, right? So it, it, there's a lot of people skills now that come back from experience with the mom if you're teaching for toddlers. You can deliver this in an on-demand course that she can take um, you know, early in the morning when the kids are still sleeping or late at night or that brief moment in time when she asks, it's like a one-off experience. I think there's an excursion tomorrow morning where there's a cooking class, right? Like you guys are gonna go, gonna have a great time, it's one class. I think of a course as like an extended series. So there's, there's multiple points. So my, my first cooking course, the one in 2010, was called Spice Up Your Life. I know, so original. Um, <laughs> and it was all about learning how to cook with spices. So not only was there the cooking element, but there was also like PDF documents about how to make your own spice blends, how to store them, the difference between herbs and spices, why you shouldn't put them by the stove, all these different things, in addition to the actual cooking tutorials. So I think class more experience, course obviously digital. Are you guys familiar with Patti LaBelle? Yes. And, and, and her concerts? She always comes out of her heels, okay? So that's what's happening right now. <laughs> I, just, I just want to let you know that, okay? We're keeping it real in the end of day too. Um, your cooking class, okay. So you're not gonna like my answer. <laughs> So when I'm teaching a cooking class, I'm gonna tell a story to answer your question. When I'm teaching a cooking class, a lot of times people will ask me, how long do I need to cook it until it's done, right? It's in your recipes and all that kind of stuff. And I never give an exact time. I always, I always say, till it's done. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because I tell them, I don't know what your oven or stove is like, I don't know if it's calibrated, is your steak one inch thick, is it half an inch thick, was it room temperature, was it cold, did you preheat your pan? I don't know, okay? So when it comes to cooking classes and courses and demos, there's a huge range. So if you've ever been to like a Starla Top or um, when Whole Foods used to do cooking classes or a Williams Sonoma, you're probably gonna see anywhere from 35 to 100 plus per person for an in-person experience. But you also have to realize that that's not their main revenue model, okay? That's an add-on. They're actually using those classes to sell their products, right? And they have quotas for that. When you get to courses, you know, the sky's the limit depending on how robust the course is, and that also takes into consideration who your audience is, right? So while I may be able to charge, um, you know, let's say $300 for a six-week course, right, and then sell it over and over again, um, if your audience is to an uh, uh, audience who likes the coupon, they may not want that. When it comes to corporations, however, 
I did a flat fee up to a certain um, number of participants, and then I went up from there. And that was just based more on the quality of my work, and that I've done this for so long. So, you know, I wasn't doing a cooking class. Um, I was in this. I had four different types of cooking classes. Some of them I was just talking about food. There was no food involved, and I didn't. I, I didn't start less than twenty five hundred for forty five minutes. So, and it it went up from there. I mean, I've been paid as much as seven eight thousand dollars for a forty five minute demo. So it just depends on you. I, I'm gonna <laughs> do my best for you not to do that, but it's on them. And even. Um, Virtually, it's in the contract. Also, I will have to say, if you do run a blog that's like health or nutrition focused, when you're teaching a cooking class, you cannot give medical advice. You cannot say this this recipe will um, lower your chances of diabetes. <laughs> Legally, you cannot do that. So the second part of your question is, did the companies provide the ingredients? It depends on the company. So some companies are like, no, they're they're going to buy their own ingredients. Some companies did gift cards, and some companies were like, no, we're going to spend the time. We're going to build a box. We're going to ship it to all our employees. So that I really leave that up to them. I provide the grocery list. Um, small side note, in the state of California, any rental kitchen space that you use or any space that you rent will require you to have insurance. Yes, it will. I would have been lost. Hi Liz, I'm Evelyn. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I know, and I'm over. I just want to give y'all a sample of the home show. Look at this. You've never seen anything like this. It's crazy. Look at all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Miniature so basically yeah, the tomato, tomato. It's, it's very easy for me to promote this because <laughs> I, I use this sustainability element to it. Yeah. It's just it's, uh, it's kind of close to our heart in that sense. And they had handcrafted. Is it third generation? Yes. This is the third generation. So this started in 19th century in India when Britishers used to rule. At that time, they used to take a lot of uh, you know vast metal craft back to England. Um, so before the before that, uh, they, they used to make swords. So in that time, so it's all metal craft. So they, these folks are. This is uh, this is something they uh, you know live and breathe. Good morning, happy Saturday, y'all. I'm so tired. Look, I, my face is looking rough, but. I just ordered some Panera for breakfast, so it just arrived to the hotel. So the conference is over today, but it's the International House and Homewares show. Um, today, tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday. I'm leaving on Monday. I'm trying to decide if I want to go to the houseware shows today, which I think I do. I don't want to sit in the bed all day. But y'all, it's massive. It is massive. Um, Martha Stewart is doing a cooking demo today. So I, I, I might check that out. And then Tia Mowry is doing her cooking demo tomorrow. But I, I like I was there last night for the Influencer Expo. It's it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Um, I mean, I think they said McCormick Place might be like one of the largest convention centers in the United States. And I've been here before, but I haven't been here since like 2012. So yeah, um, 
Okay, I'm gonna eat because I'm hungry and I will hopefully see y'all at the houseware show. Well, you know what I'm saying, like take y'all along. I got the good morning voice. I haven't talked to anybody today. Okay, bye. Okay, so y'all, you know when somebody rubs their face, they're tired. So change of plans. I, I was sitting here thinking about how it's it's a quarter after 10. I just finished um, my breakfast and I ordered some stuff from Target that I needed. Um, shout out to Instacart for that. I mean, they're not sponsoring this video, so maybe I shouldn't shout them out, but I have another dinner tonight as part of the conference experience. And so I'm like, I'm really tired and I don't have anything planned for tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I just want to chill today and rest. I don't want to force myself for a third day of just like all day. Like my legs are kind of sore. Um, It's just been like nonstop. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to chill in the hotel today until it's time for dinner because we're meeting for dinner at five and so i'll probably start getting ready at like three maybe three thirty so i can uber there and all that kind of stuff and then it's gonna be a whole evening so like i just i just need some time to myself <laughs> to introvert a little bit um and then I'll go to the home show tomorrow. And listen, the home show is so big, you can't even get through it. Even if I, even if I went all day today and all day tomorrow, you can't get through it. Um, I really, I really don't have a desire to see Martha Stewart. I, you know, the content creator in me was like, it'd be so great to get shots of Martha Stewart, but like, who cares? Uh, I do want to see Tia Maori tomorrow, so um, I think she's tomorrow. If I miss her, it's fine. So I don't, y'all, I don't even know where to look in the camera. I think I'm supposed to look right there. Anyway, the angle is bad. That's probably better. I, I literally had y'all like this. This is this is probably better. Um, yeah, I'm at that age where me being well rested is just like a top priority. Like I need to be well rested. As you can hear in my voice, I'm not well rested. And so, um, I feel bad because I told the housekeeping lady she could come back in an hour. I'm about to put this do not disturb sign on this door. I've also bought some snacks from Target. So, um, that way if I needed something before dinner, I could have a little snackety snack. And, you know, like getting there, getting registered, um, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. I'm going to I'm gonna give myself some grace, at least to probably 12 o'clock, and we'll see how I'm feeling. But I don't want to get dressed while we're over there, only to be there for like three hours, come back. I don't know. As you can see, I don't have a plan. <laughs> Best plan is that I don't have a plan. So anyway, I'm going to put this Do Not Disturb sign on this door. We'll watch some YouTube videos, maybe watch a movie, see how I feel. yeah okay plus like just looking out the room at this view i don't know if y'all can see that it's just it's just peaceful so like i got the bond in the scarf i'm looking just busted and disgusted at the moment but that's where that's where we're at okay
Hey y'all, so uh, it's Sunday and I'm back at the hotel because I never made it to the show. So <laughs> I had reached out on Facebook to ask some of my Facebook friends, family, college friends, stuff like that, like where's a good place to eat in Chicago? Only for some of my college, some of the people I went to college to be like, oh, we having to get together for somebody's birthday. Why don't you come through? So that's what I did. So I just got back from that. I was there for probably about three hours. We ate, we danced, we had a good time. I don't know if I have video footage because obviously there was copyright music, but I do have pictures. So I'll probably insert those somewhere in here. But I was gonna try to leave there and go to the show. And I was like, I, I'm <laughs> I'm good. So I'm back in the hotel. I have changed clothes. Like I'm in some loungewear. Like those are actual leggings. That's not me being naked. <laughs> Uh, this actually has bottoms to it, but I wanted something a little warmer since it is cool and shit back cold again today. But yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like this vlog is mad chop blog. Wow, see this is what I'm talking about. I feel like this vlog is mad choppy because again, I'm out of practice. But I wanted to capture like the conference. I wanted to capture the convention center. I wanted to capture the food um i wanted to capture all the things and i don't know if i captured any of that really really well i mean there may be and at this point you may have seen like some instagram 
um, clips in here just so I could create a full experience for y'all. But I've had a great time. I got here Wednesday night. Today is Sunday. I leave in the morning. Um, I did some packing this morning, so I'm pretty much for the most part packed up. Um, I'll just have to pack up my things like obviously once I shower and do all of that. So yeah, y'all, I am going to order dinner in tonight because I'm not eating at the hotel restaurant just because it's a tapas um, restaurant. And while it's fine, it doesn't really make a meal. And let me tell you, the brunch place that we went to, I. I'm not even going to get into what they charged to be there, but you're mainly paying for the alcohol and I'm not really a big drinker. So, um, there's that. So it was like a, uh, like bottomless mimosas, alcohol, food, DJ situation. Not really my scene, you know what I'm saying? But I had a great time. So yeah gonna chill out tonight watch some movies watch some youtube finish packing and then get ready to go home in the morning all right y'all peace So I am getting ready to check out. My flight has been delayed by several hours because I think I showed you in a clip, it is snowing. <laughs> so we've gone from days of 30 degree weather to 70 degree weather to now it's snowing. Um, it's one of the things I remember about the Midwest of being a Midwest girl myself, but I'm about to check out and head to the airport. So.